Hey everyone, so I'm um, going to make a new series called Straight Basics and it's going to be just fundamental knowledge around particular uh, topics and things I, you know, I have kind of knowledge in and I'm going to teach you the way I learned it or the way I kind of, um, you know, kind of mapped it in my brain and hopefully this will help you understand the particular topic as well. And you know, if this is if this is a gap you have, then hopefully it'll help you. And if not, then skip this video. Um, but if you like it and you like this type of content, please like and subscribe so I know you you like this type of uh, um, you know series as well. So again, this is just going to be topics that you may or may not know that you know it's always good to know. So yeah, let's get started. So when we talk about networking. Um, you hear about all the time. It's it's packet to packet communication. You hear about you know IP addresses, but do you really know how packets actually travel through the networks and how it's routed through routers and switches and firewalls and how that kind of flows? And if not, then maybe this might help you. Okay, so let's not talk about networking uh, right now. We're actually just gonna sh just show you like sort of a real life scenario. So I'm going to draw a house, right? Actually, I'm going to draw an apartment. Okay. And then let's draw, mm, let's say, let's say this, let's just call them IRS. And let's say you need to mail your, uh, you know, tax paperwork to the IRS. How would you achieve that? Well, now you could definitely do the internet, but for this example, we're just going to do the traditional mail. So you're going to make a little, you know, you're going to package your little mail, right? And you're going to put your documents inside it, right? You're going to put it in that document and you're going to mail it to the IRS. What do you actually put on the destination? You put an address. So you're going to put, you know, a number, um, an address, um, city, uh, state, and uh, a zip, right? Something like that. You're going to put that, you're going to put this on the address so you know it reaches the intended location, right? Okay. Now, what if the IRS said, I didn't receive it, and they wanted to send you something? Well, they're going to package their own envelope, and they're going to send it to your address, right? But how do you actually route it to rooms within the apartment? Like, each, apart each apartment building has hundreds of, you know, different um, units. So how do you actually route it to a unit? Well, you have an apartment number, right? So that apartment number could be like unit one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So now you know that you can route it to the address which, which will take that, you know, that envelope to the apartment and then the apartment number will route it to the intended unit. Imagine that's kind of like networking too. The, uh, the units, right, these units, We'll call them subnets. Can you say that? Subnets. Okay. In the IT world or, you know, networking, we are routing between subnets. So if you're routing from one subnet to another, you don't just hand it to each other. You got to pass it to what they call a router. Okay. So you got to pass it to a router. Does that make sense? A router routes between subnets. That's its job. Subnets, if you heard about OSI model, I'm not going to go too much into it. Just know that um, layer one is, you know, physical connectivity. Layer two is kind of subnets. And layer three is sort of, you know, routing, the routing layer. Okay? So subnet is layer two. Okay? Layer three is routing between subnets, right? Subnets 
computers route inside subnets. So you can have multiple people within the subnet, right? You can have multiple people living in a unit, right? And to route to each other, just call, maybe they have names or something, but um, if you're routing to someone within your subnet, do you have to go to the router? If you want to send a message to your friend that lives in the same unit as you, do you have to go send it to a router? No, you just tell them, right? And you and you directly tell them and communicate them by name, right? Or maybe text them on cell phone, whatever. But we're not going to get into that. But you talk to them directly. You can literally send them a message locally. You don't have to route to a router. But when you need to send something outside of your subnet, you got to send it to a router. So a imagine a router inside this apartment it could be a person that just you know is that person that communicates back and forth okay and the router's job and there's gonna be routers everywhere there's gonna be routers here there's gonna be a router here there'll be a router maybe here there will be routers all along the path to reach the intended IRS imagine the post office when you route mail you're routing between different post offices it doesn't go straight to that location It'll go to a post office distribution center and then go to the next distribution center until it goes to a main distribution center that's connected to or would be like the last distribution stop before it gets routed to the mail carriers to deliver it right to your to your address, right? Does that make sense? So again, you're going to want to route this traffic and um, hopefully this is you're kind of understanding routing a little bit is you know this is kind of the fundamental sort of knowledge I can kind of share to give you that to set that picture right now let's actually get into the tech side so same scenario you've got a house what is your router do you know if you don't know what your router is usually your router if you pull up command line so you type in a you go to search here type in a, a cmd for your command prompt and then type in ping or no do uh, ip config and you should be able oh sorry IP config, and you should be able to get your router address, which is going to be this address here. Okay? The IPv4 address. That's your address. Subnet mask. Whenever you're talking about layer 3 routing, there's always going to be IPv4 or a host address. There's always going to be a default gateway, and there's always going to be a subnet mask for that client. And so when we talk about routing in the same context, but let's say this is not the IRS anymore. Let's say this is, uh, let's say Netflix or whatever it is, whatever the service is. It could be Netflix. It could be uh, Amazon. It could be office, right? doesn't matter. But how do you reach this location? Well, if you do a ping netflix.com, it has an IP address, okay? So it has a IP address right here. See, that is Netflix IP address. Now, it's not the only IP address. Netflix might have a cluster of IP addresses, okay? But this is sort of IP address they own. So let's say it's a 44 dot something dot something dot something. That's their address, and Amazon might have their own IP address. Let me ask you this. Would, does your mailing address change? Typically not. Your mailing address doesn't change. If it changed, it'll be hard to get there. It'll be hard to get mail to you if it's always changing, right? But in the internet world, your IP address, for the most part, for most end users or people, you you have what they call a dynamic address. And this 
is a changing IP address. When you reboot your router, you may get a new IP address. Unless you pay for a service or you have some maybe fiber connection, sometimes you get a static IP address, which then never changes. There's advantages and disadvantages to each one. Um, but for this, for the sake of this demo or tutorial, we're not going to go into that. But just know that you have a dynamic address. And a lot of companies, they have static addresses. They actually own, you can actually own IP ranges, right? And there's a finite number. So there's a, that's why there's a big shift to a new, um, uh, what, we, what they call a new type of standard called IPv6, which is going to allow more IP addresses. But we're slowly kind of shifting uh, to IPv6. And it's been a little, a little hard, but you know, just know that uh, this type of style where it's a, it's a digit, period, digit, period, digit, um, called, you know, they're called octets, there's a finite number. Okay? So when I want to route from my computer to here, um, and I'm in a, you know, this is sort of my subnet, we'll call it, you know, this is my subnet right here. We'll call this the router. How do I actually transfer the uh, information from my computer to Netflix? Well, I go, I, I'm going to route to my default gateway. Right? I'm going to route that packet to the default gateway. And then from there, it's going to reach Netflix. Netflix is going to see that request coming in from my IP. So let's say my IP is 1.1.1.1. It's going to see a request from 1.1.1.1 to uh, 44.x.x.x, whatever the IP address is. And then it's going to respond. It's going to send a response back to my 1.1.1.1. And the router is the device that actually owns that 1.1.1.1, okay? Then it actually knows the internal IP. So there's internal IPs and external IPs. Your IP address here that you have here is not going to be the same IP you have uh, in the um, internet. If you want to find that IP, you just do a, uh, you know, what is my IP? You know, you do go, go, go and do, and do what is my IP, right? Or just search for that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it because then you're going to know my uh, IP address. So I don't want to do that. Um, but you have your own external IP, okay? And you have an internal IP. So your internal IP there's actually a preset pool of IPs that you can use. So uh, let's, for this example, let's just call it 192.168.1.1, okay? So you have your internal IP, you route to the default gateway, which could be, a, you know, something like this. It might be, and this might even be your default gateway. If it is, don't worry, it's it's a pretty common default gateway. 192.168.1.1. That's a pretty common default gateway. And you route to that default gateway, and then your default gateway um, will route to the uh, Netflix, right? If you want to associate it to that real-world scenario, let me draw it in red. The external IP is the address of the apartment. The internal IP is sort of maybe um, your unit number. Something like that, right? Where you're routing from your unit number to the router and then from the router it reaches Netflix. So when Netflix wanted to send a, you know, a mail package to you, it, you have to reference the address of the apartment, but you also have to put the apartment number, right? 
which is unit one. It's kind of the same thing. But in this case, Netflix doesn't have to know the uh, address of the unit. What it, all it does is just routes it to the, uh, the router, and the router sort of has a pull. Um, it, knows, it knows who to send packets to in, inside. So if you have multiple people connecting to this network, and maybe you know a cell phone's connecting over here, and the cell phone's connecting over here, they're all talking to the same router, okay? And they all have different IP addresses. Everybody has to have a unique IP. It cannot be the same IP. That will be an IP conflict. If someone has the same unit number as you, well, the person de delivering mail inside your apartment, that you know, that um, you know, that that worker, he's going to be confused because he sees two different apart, two different units with the same unit number. Who does he give the mail to? So you can't have any IP address conflict. That's what they would call it. Okay, and so that's basically uh, networking in a nutshell. Um, you're going to have on your router. It's going to do multi. It's going to have multi multiple roles it could be a router it could be a firewall and it's also going to be a switch too okay and a switch is usually when you get when you purchase a router on best buy or wherever um it does two it does a lot of jobs it does it does a firewall job it'll do a router job it'll do a switch job it'll also do um uh dh CP, it also maybe does DNS, right? It does a lot of jobs in that router. It does a lot of things. In an enterprise organization, sometimes all these jobs are kind of split into different machines or boxes. But for most home use, you just got one router that does a lot of things. That's why if that router was to be compromised or hacked or that modem or that you know, it also could be a modem, right? Some, if you have a Comcast modem, that modem could do all that job, could do all that stuff, right? And if that device is compromised, what do you think happens? You get access to everything downstream. So it's always important to secure that device from uh, external parties by, you know, setting up a password, um, hardening your firewall or device, making sure it's updated, um, things like that. Okay. One thing you could do to figure out how your packets are routing is you could do a um, trace route, not tracer R, not trace RT or tracer T. I think someone called it. It's just a trace route, but the the it's like this, but it's just been shortened. So trace trace RT, and then like just go Google.com or something, and you're gonna see. The hops it's making. Remember, we're talking about the post office and uh, distribution points. There's, it's first makes a hop to this, then makes it to uh, my ISP, and then makes it to this and that, and goes to level three. Level three is a you know very large um, uh, you know service that uh, provides. Uh, all these interconnect interconnectivities and and routing infrastructure, um, you know, throughout the United States, and yeah, it's just these are all the hops it's making to the actual location. Okay, so while it's routing, uh, while your packet is routing through all these hops, it always has a target address which is Netflix.com, and it will always have the source address which is you. So it will always have the source and the target address, and as it makes hops. You know, similar to a a piece of mail, you have a source to and from. It'll it'll hop between these uh, distribution points and reach your intended location. Okay, so yeah, that's uh just wanted to sh share that as well with you. Okay, I think that's it. I don't want to keep it too long, but hopefully this was helpful to help you understand networking. Um, you know, at a fundamental level. And we'll just add to it. And, you know, I think the next series I'll talk about 
IP subnetting. So I have a pretty cool trick or a way I subnet, and I don't really have to use a calculator. I can just kind of do it, um, you know, I just do it from you know, mentally and just uh, subnet. I can't do big stuff, but I can just do this simple subnetting and, you know, breaking apart maybe a 24 or 25 or 23 network or, um, you know, figuring out the subnet mask. So if, uh, yeah, if this was helpful, uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll continue to do more videos like this. Thank you, everyone.